to Eat Well with Kristen and Adele. I'm Kristen. And I'm Adele. We're private practice dietitians that live in Palmerston North and we're doing this webinar for Celiac New Zealand. Today we're going to be talking about cross-contamination. So Adele, what is cross-contamination? So Kristen, cross-contamination is where gluten-free foods come in contact with gluten-containing foods and are no longer safe to eat. Some people with celiac disease may not feel better on a gluten-free diet because it might be that gluten is accidentally sneaking in. So does this mean that if we bring gluten-free food into the home, it may not necessarily be safe? That is exactly right, Kristen. And today we are going to look at some of the major areas where gluten might be sneaking in and we should be aware of. All right, let's do let's this. Let's go. All right, well, so we're gonna start out in Adele's kitchen and the first place we're gonna go is the fridge. So what do we have in here? Ooh, some spread. So what's in there, Adele, besides the spread? Some breadcrumbs. So anything, Kristen, that requires you to put a knife in it, whether that's butter or peanut butter, jams, spreads, mustard, mayonnaise, is a possibility where things can get contaminated and you might get that on your gluten-free bread. So you may want to have a little separate container in your fridge that's got your gluten-free containing spreads in them kept separately from the rest of the family members. Adele's gluten-free spreads, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> or you want to maybe just write your name on them with a Sharpie and hope the rest of the family members do not use it. Okay. So now we're going to take a look in the pantry and see where things can go wrong there. Oh wow, that's, that's quite a pantry, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some gluten-free flour, we've got some normal flour. Oh, oh, oh! So, as you can see, that just went everywhere. And it might be a good idea to put your gluten-free flour in a separate container and store it separately from your normal flour. You may want to have a shelf separate um, for gluten-free products and preferably above the shelf of the gluten-containing foods. Not like this. Adele, what's the story with oats? Oh. Kristen, that is a very good question. In some countries, oats are considered gluten-free. However, unfortunately in New Zealand, oats are heavily contaminated with gluten and therefore not considered safe to eat. Oh, okay, so that includes oat bars and oat milk as well? That's right, Kristen. Yep. Unless it's labeled as gluten-free. Correct. Adele, before we leave the pantry, this makes me think about foods that come from bulk bins and their potential risk of cross-contamination. That's exactly right, Kristen, and it's exactly for that reason why it's best not to buy foods from bulk bins, but rather buy pre-packaged products like these dried apricots instead. Okay, talking about labels, Adele, um, what if if a food product says may contain gluten or made in the same line as gluten containing foods? Oh, like this crystallized ginger, it says may contain gluten. Well, it is recommended, Kristen, that you avoid these foods unless you have contacted the manufacturer and you are reassured that it is made in a way that the product still remains gluten free. You will see most products have got the manufacturer details on the back of it or you can find them online. Another common place for cross-contamination is kitchen appliances. And we're gonna have a look at some of the Dell's kitchen appliances now. <laughs> so I'm sure everybody else's toaster looks just like this one. As you can see, there's crumbs all over it. And so if you were to put your gluten-free bread in there, it is very likely it will become contaminated with gluten. So one of the ways around it is you can either get some toaster bags that you toast your gluten-free bread in the toaster in, or you could just use a clean baking sheet and grill your bread in the oven. 
Another appliance where cross-contamination can happen is an air fryer. I'll just show you this. As you can see, it's full of crumbs from chicken nuggets my kids have cooked earlier. So if you are um, going to use this to cook your gluten-free foods, then make sure that you've washed it really, really well. If you cannot be sure that you can clean it really properly to cook your food in, you may want to use a clean baking sheet and cook your food in the oven instead. Another place, uh, again, where it can happen, is if you don't have your own set of pots and pans to cook your food in, you want to make sure that you clean your pots and pans really well before cooking your gluten-free foods. And you may want to cook your gluten-free meals first before cooking the gluten-containing meals. So what are you doing there now, Adele? And Kristen, I'm just cleaning the workbench because another big area of cross-contamination is work surfaces. So if your kitchen is not big enough for you to have a dedicated area where you can prepare your gluten-free foods, you need to make sure that your work surfaces are wiped down very well every time after you prepare food. <laughs> last area we're going to look at in the kitchen is again utensils. You want to maybe make sure that you have your own chopping boards, um, spreading knives, bread knives and utensils to use for your gluten-free foods. We've taken a tour of Adele's kitchen to look for any potential sources of cross-contamination in the kitchen. Is there anything else we need to be thinking about, Adele? Well, yes, Kristen. Things like toothpaste, making sure that the toothpaste you use are gluten-free and making sure that you don't share toothbrushes with other family members. Okay. Looking at your cosmetics and fillers used in them, making sure that they are gluten-free. Mm, my lips are dry. How about some lip balm? Oh, thanks, Kristen. Yes, I do need some, actually. But sharing lip balm and lipstick with anybody who eats gluten is not a good idea. Are you okay? I tell you, all this filming has given me a headache. Do you have any ibuprofen? Oh, I do actually, Kristen. I've checked this one, and this one only contains May starch and will be safe for you to use. Do you mean medication also contains gluten? Yes, it does, as well as um, vitamin and mineral supplements. So always a good idea to check whether they are gluten-free and if you're not sure, ask a pharmacist or the manufacturer. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you for joining us today. We hope you've learned a bit more about gluten contamination in the home and how you can prevent it. To learn more, go to Celiac New Zealand's website or book in an appointment with your dietitian. Kia kaha, be well.